Hey everybody, it's Neil, and I'm really excited to be back with you guys again. Today we're going to do a new episode of Two Hour Cues, episode 7, and today we're going to talk about one of my favorite genres, horror. I think of the early movies that I saw that scared the living shit out of me, like The Exorcist. I still watch that, and it's, it's freaky. The whole Halloween series, uh, when I was a kid, it was like Nightmare on Elm Street. And then you fast forward to now and you have like amazing movies with the visual effects that we can do now. The film and the, the scoring really has to complement that. I was checking out like, you know, the Conjuring scores and those are fantastic. And there's a lot of great ones out there. Um, and so today I was inspired by that kind of sound and I listened to a bunch of it and I really, really enjoyed it. It's very like dark and it draws you in and like evil and you feel like your hair is standing on end. It's... It does what it's supposed to do. You know, the director is like, I need this to feel a certain way, you know, an emotion as I've talked about before is really how music fits in the picture. The newer films being this more of an underscore of evil. Watching also the trailers and my experience with, you know, scoring spots and, and trailers, I kind of wanted to do a piece that was a combination of those two worlds. Um, so I'm going to play the whole thing and then we'll start to look at what I did. So why don't we just get into it and do it. That's the vibe. Okay, so let's take a look at what on earth this thing is. Why don't we start with the piano? Dissonant note, and then starts to move at bar 10. Pretty subtle and then towards the end where it starts to build and sort of like trailer fashion again that little three note theme and it repeats over and over and it has like a warbly tone to it to make it seem almost like an upright out of tune piano as I was working I was like that works, but like, how could it be creepier? I experimented with bringing in a second piano and detuning a little bit and then playing them together. More dissonant. So that to me made it feel a little more creepy, just the, the minor seconds. Um, and that goes throughout the piece to the end. All right, let's go on to the next chunk. And, you know, there's not much happening with the piano outside of it being, you know, reverb and all the normal stuff. So talking about percussion, 
Um, there's low boomers in here and some effects, and that's kind of combined on this one channel. So we have this first sound. And that's coming from uh, gravity. And then as it moves down the timeline, we start to get some really punchy in the gut hits. As it starts to build towards the end, there's more hits that just become sort of that pushing, driving, you know, trailer end riser thing. With a cool sound effect into it. When I was doing that, I was kind of thinking of almost like The Shining, where he's like hacking through the door, you know, and uh, the timing on this piece, there is a tempo, but I, it was very loosely used. So those hits were more to feel, you know, like as it was speeding up. So nothing's really quantized, which you can see here with these hits as they speed up. And they kind of went off of the other effects that are going on. So most of the stuff so far that we've listened to are like from libraries, big hits, some pianos, some sound effects and stuff. And there's more of that. There are strings. Um, I want to get into some of the more, the more creative fun sounds I used. This actually started off initially with me picking up my guitar and fooling around with like how low could I tune a string and put it in distortion. So... I took my guitar, I plugged it into a distortion pedal, went right into my digital audio workstation's input, recorded it, and then used a lot of effects on it. So let's just listen to this first part here. So that's sort of like a high harmonic E note, uh, and the corresponding... Effects. There's a lot here. We've got a delay and a big haul, and then also, if we blow this up, we've got it really compressed. So you can hear all the all the schmutz and the noise underneath, you know, um, to make it sound a little more gritty. There's an EQ on there where I was taking some of the high end off and a little bit of the low end just to get it to sit right. And then this sound shaper plugin that I was dropping the pitch by one semitone to make it sound a little darker. So if it's, if it's dry, it doesn't sound very scary. It's a little weird with that kind of feedbacky sound, but when you start to put on just the plugins, it's more in your face. You can hear more of that like noise underneath. And then when it gets put into the delay in the large hall and it bends upward and the delay kind of folds over itself, it's a it's kind of a neat effect. So let's get this out of the way and this too and see what else is going on in the world of guitars. Again, this is distortion straight into the board and then a lot of effects on it. So. That sounded pretty evil to me. Like, you know, I just, I think I had tuned the string super low and I was kind of pulling beyond the nut of where the string sits on a guitar um, and just bending it up a little bit, almost like a Black Sabbath thing. Again, I'll play it and then listen to it dry. So if we pull the mixer over, there's a tremolo effect to pull this over again a compressor which is slammed so it's again really in your face so if i shut those off it's obviously softer but it sounds more present with these effects on and this kind of giant hull without it and without the effects It's a little muddy, but it does do its its job. 
All right. So the different guitar parts here, then they start to stack up together later on in the piece. So you have the lower guitar kind of and the higher harmonic bending upward and it just feels a little creepy. Those are some of the things that are recorded. So why don't we listen from the beginning? We've heard a few things isolated and we can see like how they're working in the mix. There's a whole bunch of flavors happening there, right? We heard the piano intro, and then it kind of descends with the two pianos split with a, a semitone between them. Um, but there's other stuff going on. So there are strings, kind of high. So you can see down here, I'm pointing at the screen like it's an iPad, yeah old person. Um, pitch bend. I was taking the strings and I was bending it down and it's it's from um, more of a chamber size string section. So it gets creepy or creepy-er, I think, as you bend the string using the pitch. Yeah, the pitch wheel starts to drop. Lower and lower, then back up. And there's another string part going on here, which is doing similar movement, but at a different time. So there's a lot of volume movement. You can see I'm using Cubase, and this is the controller data. And then up here is the pitch bend. So it's it's a, it's normal, you know, static pitch, and then it starts to rise, and the other one's dropping. So this one... So together, the, the two different string parts Pretty creepy. I think it's effective. Other things happening in the intro here. We have the piano, we have the hits and the effects, we have the strings, and then there's this sultry which was like a ding, and I reversed it. So a bunch of effects happening on that. It was really piercing, so I ducked some of the high frequencies. I used a tape simulator to take some of the, the edge off the top, crushed it pretty good with an 1176 compressor, and then used this tremolo really at a very rapid rate. kind of give it like this undulating, ah, you know, kind of spazzed out feeling. And then it's pretty wet. So with this off, and then it just ends zip backwards. So if we put those effects back on, it works in the intro. Let's hear it in context. get to what I was talking about before where I used my voice. I'm not a singer. I can make weird noises. Pretty good though. These are sort of inhale breathing sounds. It sounds a little possessed. And they're subtle and quiet and I guess pretty creepy in my opinion. This is one of my favorite sections here. And I'll tell you why. 
So I have this uh, Moog Sub 37 synth over there. It's pretty awesome. It's got some great sounds in it. So I really fooled around with like, let me find the right patch. Let me get something that's growly and then let's go as low as we can before it sounds like complete mud. And so I found that spot and then I, I played with the filter cutoff. So if it was open, it was really kind of raunchy sounding. And I found this sweet spot where it almost feels like it's breathing. And once I got it, tweaked i was afraid it was gonna go away forever and i'd lose the preset these things happen so i made it audio so if we listen to that moog part it's like sinister breathing that's how it felt to me. And it happens right as this descending piano comes in with the two pianos playing together. So you end up with... And I think it works pretty well too. You know, there's the high tension strings they're really subtle and there's a there's space in this section. So you get to hear that like lightly tapped piano note, this breathing underneath, you know, because we're high on the piano, the the Moog synth is like very low. And then you've got these like crazy high strings. So it does get pretty frenetic and thick later, but in this section, they all feel like they have their own place to live. And then it's kind of broken up with a jarring brrr, you know, the guitar part that we already listened to, but in context. And then there's that part. So, you know, you're watching horror films and like something jumps out and there's like this big sound design moment or a sound effect or all the above could even be in the score. I wanted to figure that out. I'm like, how, how do we do that? I know, you know, a good punch in the gut hit. Um, I had some tremolo strings that could happen. And I was like, what if I did some like freaky vocal thing? And when you hear it without the effects on, it's funny. Um, so this is just the sound. That's demented. Okay, so this is going to be embarrassing, but I'm going to do it for the greater good. All right, so we, we have that firmly planted in our head, right? So first we'll shut off the, uh, the wet effects, like the reverb and uh, the delay. It's still pretty creepy. It's not as wet. Now we go into the land of what did I do with this? So here's an EQ and I took out most of the low end, most of the high end. There's also this tremolo effect, seems to be a recurring theme. So I'm gonna shut that off. It's just kind of pulsing. And I think the distortion is sort of overriding it. It's, it's hard to hear. I also used the 1176. Everything that I kind of recorded, I wanted like really in your face and to bring all the dirt and grit and all that lovely stuff into it. And then we have this plugin, which is the real clincher. Without this, I have no words. That's uh, me on the microphone. It's a lot creepier when it's low. And at the end of it, I used like kind of a compression distortion plugin punish just to add a little more heat to it. So I redeem myself because I think it kind of works in the whole mix. Let me know in the comments. All right, so we're gonna shut all these plugin windows and then we're gonna listen to what else happens with this thing? There's a hit at the same time. That wakes you up. So we've got, again, the dark hook vocal, as I called it. Now that we've unearthed our strings, let's see what those are doing. Again, another common theme of like things, 
pitched down, bending down. It just has this unnerving, unsettling feeling um, that I think works. And I've heard it used as a device in, in horror films. Some heavy cello with the high strings. Those are really creepy. It's it's like bowed, you know, there's a lot of bow noise and that high kind of breath to it. It adds to the creep factor. So everything together in this section. I guess this is sort of like the middle section. The mode comes back in and starts doing its its sinister breathing thing, right? And then I use this other smaller Moog synth I have. It's the Mother 32 here. And just added this little wub wub part. just liked it. I don't know why I did that, but I did. So against the darker lower Moog, there's a little spot in there to throw it in. Other things going on, we brought the, the Psaltery back in reverse. And it has a tremolo effect on it. It just makes it feel more jittery and spastic and, and weird. That's what we're going for, right? So really, you know, it's all about creating this vibe, you know, and I just kind of sculpted this as I went along, you know, recorded a bunch of elements, started placing them in different sections throughout the timeline to kind of give it sort of a randomness, but also so it could have space to breathe. I think like subtle textures and sound in horror can be actually more effective than like everything at once smashing in the face. Those moments are great too to scare the living shit out of you, but like just the breathing or the you know, the, the subtle string or the psaltery that has all this tremolo on it. So part of, you know, my experimentation with this piece was a lot of that. Moving stuff around, finding spots, trying to mute stuff. You see, like, there's quite a few tracks here that are white. And in Cubase, that means they've been muted. Some of them were turned into audio so I could put more effects on them. And other ones were like me experimenting. Like at the end of the track, there are all these other parts that I recorded that I didn't end up using. So I just toss them to the end and use this kind of as like my collage or my canvas to write. Okay, so enough about that. So if we go from, here's our scary vocal, you know, and we have our Novo strings, and then we start to launch into the end where it gets more energy, more frenetic. It's just more intense. So we got the tremolo strings. <laughs> You gotta have that final, like, unexpected, disturbing hit. It's just, it's mandatory in horror. Okay, so let's take a look, right? We started off with our strings again. 
We can open that up, see if there's something different. I think I added yet another part. I said violas, but I believe that we were listening to a violin and a cello the first time around, then I added in viola the second time around. So, so that one I took up with the pitch. And the cellos are still kind of dive bombing down. as are the violins, but together. More dissonance is always good. All right, so let's close this enormous folder of strings. And then we start getting into the piano, which we did talk about already a bunch. And it starts to move faster and faster with that bang, 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 kind of motif. Again, some more effects here. Let's take a look at this. So that's coming from Gravity, which is low boomers, hits, pads, stings, sound effects, and that's essentially what this sound is. Sort of like a staticky, like what the, what is that? So if we back up, we'll hear that. And then we have a riser, which this static sound kind of comes out of. Um, piano's building, percussion's hitting, Strings are doing their thing. Moog synth is rumbling away. So we build this kind of cacophonous craziness in the end with the piano, with the riser, you know, the hits, almost the axe on the door from The Shining, as I was talking about before, the high strings and the Moog. So out of all that, it's building and building and building. And then I was like, how do I end this and bring it down? So it's comes to this kind of subtle creepiness. It's not over yet. And it was the strings again. So if we listen... One more time, you'll kind of hear how the strings bring it out, and then it's really soft. After those, the trem strings kind of bring you down, you get back to that low, rumbly Moog breathing vibe, which is pretty effective. And the final melody, ding, der, der, you know, is slowed down. And then there's this creepy breathing that I just did in the microphone. Uh, I thought that was kind of effective. You let me know in the comments if you think that is creepy or not. Um, and the strings. So again, let's take it from where the trem come out and then we'll hear what's remaining before we give the last kind of punch to the gut. One more little tidbit about it. Remember I said I doubled the piano with a second one? So that's this one, and it's got these reverse tails. So the note hits, and it's built into the patch where they kind of trail. And because everything is dropped down, you can finally hear that. And they're trailing afterwards and it becomes more creepy when you put the other piano in with it and you have that like rubbing half step dissonance.
and that's complemented by the high strings bending down and out. So just from the end, one more time. And again, I said I used a lot of effects, so the Moog in the end kind of ends and it fades out. If we take a look at what the mixer's doing on that. So you can see right here on the mixer, let me blow that channel up. For the entire piece, it was not wet. It was just kind of rumbling along, and this is, it says alti, which is an alter verb hall. I automated it to turn on on the last note and throw it into the reverb, so you'll see that happen. Up and on. It's almost like thunder. And then if you didn't see the timeline, you wouldn't know that the last gruesome hit is about to hit you. All right, so let's take a listen from the top down, and we're out of here. So that was the piece. I hope you guys enjoyed it and got something out of it. We took a look at how to use other sources of sound, like whether it's your voice doing weird things, sorry about that, uh, guitars doing weird bend things, and also using stuff that you can get in the box, string libraries and getting tremolo strings, bending, using a lot of effects, sculpting the sounds with different EQs, hard compression so it's really in your face distortion, delays, you know, all those factors, and then space and subtle and quiet can really raise your hair up. And then again, this being sort of a hybrid of kind of a film score cue melded with a trailer that you might see for a horror film. Um, and that was kind of what I was going for to show you guys the, the different techniques that you can use to achieve this kind of sound. So again, thanks everybody for tuning in and watching. Uh, if this is your first time watching to our cues, please make sure you give it a like. That always helps us. And subscribe to our channel, the Heaviosity YouTube channel, so you get all of the latest and greatest content coming out of Heaviosity. And again, I just wanted to say thanks so much for watching and take care.